Hello, welcome to the Virginia Quilt Museum. I'm Susan Farmer, Executive Director. I hope that this video finds you healthy and happy at home. Um, and today we will be presenting our second virtual quilt turning for you. We hope that you enjoy these videos and that you learn something. This is the Bell Grove album quilt. It was made in 1991. This quilt was designed by Anna Holland, hand quilted by Marjorie Hockman, and hand appliqued by 60 quilters across the state of Virginia. The Virginia Quilt Museum Bell Grove album quilt has close ties to the museum's founding. Bell Grove Plantation of Middletown, Virginia was the first location of the Virginia Quilt Museum and is featured predominantly in the quilt's design. The manor house on the plantation was built by Major Isaac Height and his wife Nellie Madison Height, who was the sister of President James Madison. During the Civil War, Bell Grove Plantation was occupied several times and was the center of the Battle of Cedar Creek on October 19, 1864. It would go through multiple owners until 1995, where plans for a space to house a quilt museum on the plantation were being discussed by a board headed by Susie Williams and Joan Knight. Susie Williams, who served as quilt director for the plantation, had frequently hosted quilt shows and other quilt related activities in Belgrove. This was the first fundraising raffle of the museum and raised over $20,000 that would be used to establish the museum. It would be donated back to the Virginia Quilt Museum by the winners of the raffle, the Skyline Quilters Guild, because of its significance to the museum's founding. The quilt itself is in a style typical of the circa 1845 Baltimore album quilts which designer Anna Holland was known for. Along with Bell Grove Plantation it features the family names associated with the plantation's history and contains the inked names of all of those who worked on the quilt. This is a string comfort quilt circa 1930. Made by Elizabeth Meyerhofer using a variety of fabrics, this pieced comforter is representative of the more utilitarian aspect of quilting. While many quilts were made with intricate needlework and whole pieces of new fabrics as a status symbol, others were created for warmth. Scraps of fabric would have all been utilized in the making of a quilt like this to utilize as much material as possible. Quilting during the Depression era was a way for women to perform practical duties for providing for her family while still indulging in creativity and artistry. Magazines pushed quilting as a way to sell themselves. They offered free quilt patterns, tips, and articles which were included in issues as a way to attract sales. Early 20th century quilting patterns became less ornate than their Victorian counterparts because of the Great Depression. The colonial revival that resulted focused on simplicity and the handmade. Quilting rapidly spread and helped by the World's Fair Century of Progress in Chicago. The World's Fair hosted a quilt making competition offering a grand prize of $1,000 plus $25 for regional winners. Dye colors at this time were also brighter, more intense, and printed fabrics were found everywhere. Feed sacks began to be made out of printed fabrics, encouraging women to buy them for their latest project. Depression era quilts such as this illustrated the nature of consumption and American society at the time. As women took up quilting in droves, many businesses saw a population of potential customers who would buy their brand of goods regularly. We hope you enjoyed this virtual quilt turning today. Thank you for joining us. If you would like to learn more about the museum or ways that you could support us, visit our website vaquiltmuseum.org for more information. Thank you so much. Stay happy, healthy, and safe at home.